So I'm um, going to carry on with our little puppy pretty soon. I've been getting prepared. Um, I've had a few questions about um, how I choose the colours for my animal portraits. And um, I just thought I'd go through it with you here. Just got a new set of Carbothello Stabilo pencils and I love these bright colours. They're fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. These are the colours that I've chosen and I'll show you how I've chosen those when I get the video going. So just these pencils we're going to be using on our puppy's face. Here he is. There we are. And what I do with all my pencils is um, as I buy them I add them to my list. So this page is this is all on white pastel mat and um, I use white pastel mat because I think then it's going to show the colours more true. Um, so I just make a little mark and then the number by, by the side of them. So for each type of pencil I've got different pages but they're all on white pastel mat. Um, so the further pages are behind, behind that. Um, so this is what I did for choosing the colours. So these are all the colours that we're going to use. Uh, I know it looks more there, but some of those are repeated. Um, I hope you can see that really well, because I'll just zoom in a bit there. So I've noted what I want, lightest areas of his black hairs, there'll be these colours, etc. So that's what I do, um, and I use this like a, a little piece of the pastel mat, just pick it up and show you. This is just a piece of pastel mat and I'll show you when I'm doing the video how I choose the colours. And I think, you know, I've seen lots of other people do it this way and it, it seems it seems really good. It seems the best way to do it to me, really. Okay, so that's it. So I'm just going to go off now and get ready and start drawing. Okay, see you soon. Okay, so we're going to start with the darkest areas first. And that means that we're going to be going over the black that's already on there. Uh, that's going to be these, these bits here. So we're going to be using, I'm referring to my pattern here that I prepared earlier. Um, we're going to be using the red 325, which is a kind of pinky red, really. Um, then we'll go on to the uh, a bit lighter hairs afterwards. We'll do these dark areas first. Okay, so here we go. Now, how I've actually found these colours, I'll show you quickly, um, is that, so I'll use the pastel mat and, let's put that down. So I would use the dark colour, so it's going to be black. And it's on quite fairly lightly actually, isn't it? I don't know if you remember, it's going back a bit actually when I put all this on. But it's fairly light and I did this with it, so it's kind of smooth. So if you go over it with the, the I, I just guess the colour really, I just guess the colour, tried a few colours out just to find one that I, I thought was, yeah, it's pretty good. And then you just sort of match it to what you've got on there. You just sort of kind of match it. And if you're, if you're kind of happy with that, then that's what you do. You just get it on there and do like that. But when we come to the next colour, I'll show you again how I get the next colour. So we've got the black on, and we're just going to go over with the pink. So, um, I think I'll put this over. I'll get the top all messed up. Um, yeah, so we've got our little dark area there, just there. So we'll go over that with the pink. And we'll just kind of do this, really. And then if they need darkening up afterwards, we can. We can just darken them up again. But this just takes that black edge off and it, it'll just help them to blend in better. This, this bit here. Now this is a very light touch I'm using here. Extremely light. Then just pat it in, really. That's black, you know, so I'm not, I'm, I'm just trying to get these. They're not black. They're very, very dark, but they're not black. This is black. So we'll be doing all that black. 
So we've got a few few areas on there. Um, I think there's a touch of that kind of here, there, like that. And uh, we've got we've got some some of this going on in here, really. Just put a few streaks in there. That's it. And then there's a little bit here. See where the black is there? We'll just soften that up a bit with the red. Very little, you see. So it doesn't take much. Okay. So then the next colour we're going to go for is this really orangey, the orangey bits. They're dark, but they're, they're kind of orange really. So for that, I've chosen these three colours. And the way I chose these was literally I just, you know, matched up. I just thought, okay, well, this is the nearest to it. This is orange. So let's try that one. So. I just did an orange bit on like that, quite strong. But that's a very light touch, it's a really incredible pencil. These are the Carbothello Stabilo pencils. And I just thought, well, it's kind of in the right ballpark, really. But if you then look at my pattern, I think, oh, okay, well, what did I do next? These are the, uh, dark, the darker areas, the main darker areas on his face. These are the darkest areas, we've just done that. The darkest areas is that red, and then cream next, and then the orange. And I've got all my numbers there already. But I've put red, then cream, then orange. That's how I do it. So we'll put the orange on. So, so basically, I'll, I'll just show you there, look. So we've got the red, and then We'll put the bit of the cream on. It just softens it a bit. You can see that it's getting a bit nearer to what we want here. It's this colour we're aiming for, this little, these little bits in here, these kind of little dark streaky bits there. This kind of area, these, the really intense orangey colours. See, we're getting there, really. And then if you put a bit of this kind of yellowy orange on top, the more you put of that on, the lighter it goes. See, it's quite near, it's quite close. You'll just kind of fiddle around with it a bit till it's, it's how you want it. But these three colours should do, really, a lot of these lovely, rich, orangey colours in his hair and we've got these on his ear but we won't do the ear yet we'll just work across i think let me try that okay so we've got them ready got them ready for action so let's start up here let's do something up here so we're putting the red this really ready orange so this is number 305 Carbothello. I can get cracking now. There's a little line. See that? That black mark there is kind of we've got we've got this, we've got that, we've got this, and then we've got that, and we've got this, and then we start with the we've got a bit of a, quite an orangey bit there. You can actually work across it like this. That's probably the best way to do it, really. Just put it up there. And then, so let's just work across it. Let's, let's be methodical about this. I'm not usually methodical, but I think it's, it's going to be nice. It's going to be easier for you if, you if you see me doing something more methodical. So I try my best. Try and do that. It's, gonna, it's a much better idea. There's that black streak there, you see? I'm going in the direction of the hair. 
and then we've got that black bit there and then we've got this here I'm going to leave the lightest bits because I think we've got, I've chosen another colour for those, another colour set. There's those two bits there, see? It's kind of going across like that. And then we've done a bit here. See, it's quite light. And some people have asked me about the tooth. Should they cover all the tooth up? And I say, well, I say no. I say use the colour of the paper. Because you see you've got little flecks in here, tiny little flecks. It's not going to be a dense colour if it's hair. It's not going to be dense, not this kind of hair anyway. Maybe on another picture, you know, if it's a very short head animal, very, very short, like a, like a, I don't know, almost like a, a, a shiny seal or something, you take another approach. But this way, I can see a little bit of darkness there. So I'm just really going with the, the darkness, the dark areas. This goes nicely over black. There's a little bit of something in here. That's why I've left that there it's dark it's dark gray so we'll, we'll probably put a bit of gray in there we'll see see how it goes this is in here and then we've got this coming round the edge here see so i'm still using that direction of the fur going down there and it does go over this black a bit. Kind of there. But don't worry, because if you do it wrong, you can go over it. You can go over it with a net, maybe another right colour. I'm going to put that in there. Now this looks incredibly bright, I know. But don't forget, we're going to put green and orange on this. So, just have to, you are know, kind of building up the colour that you want. Because we couldn't get this colour exactly, because it's all different hairs. It's like human hair. Um, you know, human hair is made up of many, many different colours. Many, many different colours. It's not just one colour. If you pull some hairs out of your head, you'll see that for yourself. They're all different, even if they're grey. Some are dark grey, some are light grey. Um, I know about all that at the moment, my hair. But um, that, that's the reality of it. So animals are no different from us. Now I'm looking at this now. This looks a little bit close. It's looking like it come, comes up a bit, but there's some more hairs going on under here around here and they're much lighter so I'm not going to do anything about those I've got another red bit there then this is a little bit there it's a little bit there the roots it's kind of starting off really very close to his nose try not to go on his nose with this because we've done his nose don't want to have to do that again that's a dark bit in there a little bit darker and a little bit darker on the edge here see I've put a little black little black spot there and some black there's some black streaks in there but we can put more black in there after So I'm still, literally, still putting the, putting the hairs in as I go here. There's a little bit of darkness in there. Then, if you come down here, you can see this is darker. No, it's black actually, but we'll put a bit of red in it. Kind of get a feel for it as you go. Just 
just go with it. Go with it and do your thing with it. Do your own thing with it. And then we've got the red down here, see? streaks of red coming up here. Beautiful. A very gorgeous little puppy, isn't it? Really gorgeous. Just go over these black bits here. As I say, that is grey in there, but it is a little tinge with this dark, dark red here. It's just here on the edge here. Now then, we've got this. That's a bit lighter, that, that hair going across there. That's that hair there. And so we want it coming here, really, in between those two dark bits. I think it's quite safe to go, you know, go for it long here. Put all these in. Always in the direction of the hairs, the way they're going to go. And you can see I've left a bit of the white paper underneath. I'm not covering it all up. You don't need to do that. You really don't need to do that. If you do that, I feel, I, you know, most people will cover that up, but I feel that you're making more work for yourself. Just, um, you know, be gentle with it. And this paper is amazing, and it, it is the, I think it's the easiest paper to use with pastel, really. It really is the easiest paper. It's all, it almost does the work for you. It really is. Really very, very good. Now that's red there. It's quite red there. And in here. Very red here. It's going to all blend into the black. psychedelic, isn't it? Huh. I think what's going to happen with this is if you want a bit more intensity in this colour afterwards, you add this in over the top of everything. Now these little tips on the end here, you can see that these, this is it's almost a straight line. It's kind of going up in that angle. It's going up slightly. And I really want to get that in. So that is going to be, it's really on the edge of that black bit of hair there. That's the angle. And then all this underneath here is the lighter, lighter bits. So we're just, Feather it down slightly here and leave all those bits on the edge there because they're going to be light. And if you look closer, you can see these little hairs going in that direction. Like that. dark bit there, that bit there, and then we've got the darker darkness there, then it comes dark here. So literally just work your way through it and copy, copy what you see. Now we've worked out the colours. Uh, that's it really, it, it didn't take very long to do that at all, it really was quick. Because I've not used these pencils before or any of these colours, uh, I've really got them because I've got so many pencils. I've got loads of uh, Faber Castell, Caran d'Ache, uh, but very few of these Stabilo, very few. And I had heard that they do really bright colour. I checked the colour chart out and I thought, hmm, they might be good for our puppy because of the intensity I want to get into this. I really want it to be intense. And I've 
because I haven't used these before, I thought I'd better have a bit of a try and see what's going to work colour-wise before I actually start videoing. Because, um, you know, I'm, I'm really conscious, I don't want to waste a time. And, you know, if you've sat through any of the background, my God, you deserve a medal. Because that was an epic. And it's, it's still not finished. But don't worry, I'm not going to put you through any more of that. I'll just get on with it on there. You've got the idea, I think, by now. I just wanted to put it on there, and I purposely put it on there, because some people would be really interested in that. Um, I would have been, you know, if I was learning, if I wanted to do a background like that, I would really have been interested in that. Like, I would have, would have watched it, probably not the whole thing, but I would have watched it, a lot of it, just to really learn how to, to get it together, you know just to learn the principles of it. Okay, so I'm just kind of, just going a bit here, just, that's, that needs a bit of this on it. Maybe even a darker one. Now this, this, this has already got the, stuff on it which is great and there's it's a bit where well, I've got a dark line going across there like that and then it goes it literally goes across this we'll just put that in as a guide for now because it's a bit more complex in here some lines you've got the lines of the hair and you've got the lovely dark edge on there but it's streaky. So use that paper for now, because we're gonna we'll put, we'll put some more color on that, but you can use that color for now. And then here, we've got a streak of red on the edge here. Get that color on there. That's going across there, really. some here. So yes, I am putting it all on together because we've already tested out the colour. And you know, if I hadn't um, tested out the colour, I'd have just probably put this on and gone for it really. But I think that way you can, it can take you longer because if you don't get it right, you've got to go keep going over it, get it right. light, really light above here, so we don't want to go up there at all with this dark colour. We've got a nice light line going through there, so in fact it's so light, and I've put the markings in already, you could actually leave that and just go over it with white at the very end. We'll do the light tips at the very end. Merging in here. A lot of this is very dark. dark that's a dark patch there. And we've got lines of lines of dark red coming through there. And we've got that mark there, that's quite a red here. The trick is not to overdo it so that you've got plenty of room for your light colours. This is why I call this drawing. For me, it is drawing. It's like drawing with colour pencils, really, but this is quicker. This is much quicker than colour pencils. You don't have any of that layering and having to build up the colours. 
and I did have a bit of a taste of that when I first started to draw. I went to a class up the road here. It was called Pets, um, yeah, Pets Using Pastel or something. And which is what I always wanted to do. I, don't, I really wasn't interested in um, doing it, anything else, really. Just I thought, yeah, that's a great thing for me to start with because I love animals. And you know, I thought I was going to really like drawing, so for me, it was a perfect choice. And I gave him the wrong. The deal was I don't know if I've told this story before, probably. I'm sorry if I have, but the deal was that if you did this course, you paid the day. You got a discount on your pencils and they gave you the pencils on the day. So what happened was um, they gave me coloured pen colouring pencils. So they weren't they weren't um, pastels at all. Oh I'm up here, okay. They weren't pastels. So they gave me colouring pencils, so she gave me the colouring paper. Um, so everyone else was making, getting on leaps and bounds, and I was really, I was struggling a bit. Although I enjoyed it, I thought, yeah, this is for me. I love this drawing. And I persevered with that picture for three months with the coloured pencils. Because I didn't realise I had the wrong pencils. I'd never done anything like this before. I had cut, I'd used colouring pencils for my homeopathy physiology pictures. Uh, which you do to learn, um, and I'd liked I'd like that, but for really I was surprised at how long it was taking me compared to everybody else. But of course, everybody else had been given the right stuff. They all had the pastel paper and the pastel pencils. The teacher, she said, "Oh, they've given you the wrong stuff." You know, it would have been nice if she'd said, "Well." How could she? It wasn't up to her. She hadn't sold me the products and she didn't want to kind of, you know, delay us all, I suppose. Um, anyway, I just carried on, but it took me three months to do that first picture of, of a cat and it was a picture that I'd taken. It was one of my favourite creatures, actually. A little tizzy. And um, I just thought, oh, mm, yeah. And then I went to the shop and just thought, oh, I'll have a look around at different things, you know, different pencils, and I realised that I had the wrong pencils. So I bought some pastel pencils, and I thought, my God, this is incredible. This is what I was after. That quick, intense colour that you can get them with, um, you can get it with Prisma pencils, I think, but I've never used those. I've already been happy with my pastel pencils. So I just think if you're happy with what you've got and you're happy doing with what, what, you've, what you're doing, then carry on. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's how I learned that the hard way, that colouring pencils are bloody hard work. They really are hard work. And it takes immense patience to use them, I think. And I've got a lot of patience, but it was too slow for me. I thought, oh no, it's, it's not what I'm after. And I'm so glad that I went to the shop and had a look for myself. I realised that, you know, I got the wrong stuff, got the wrong materials. Right, these are all black here. I've got trunk concentrate here. And these, this, this is here. That's that line there coming in. Right, so I'm kind of over, done all that area there, so I'm going to take this away now, so I can lean up here. Oh no, just look at that, just a few seconds leaning on the background. Oh, anyway, uh, so yeah, so if you want some quick results, pastels are your thing. You don't need to look any further. But it is like drawing. And um, even as a kid, although I hadn't started to draw recently until um, 14 years ago, it, as a kid I always liked to draw. Um, I really wasn't very good, but I just liked it. Just like that, you know, 
doing it. I was never a very good drawer when I was a kid. Well, I did do a good one good picture when I was 11, and that was my great granddad. I was pretty proud of that actually. And he was just sitting in the chair, and it was homework. We just did it for homework, art homework. And I did take art O level, but my work was bloody crap. Couldn't even out. It was rubbish. And I never kept any of it. The only picture that I kept was my great granddad. And that wasn't done for the exam, of course, because um, I was only 11. But I was, I was really pleased with that. And uh, another picture that I'd done, which was, because I was quite into embroidery and did embroidery design, and I kept that picture. I was quite pleased with that. But other than that, I kept nothing, nothing at all, because it wasn't worth keeping. Just chucked it all in the bin, I think. Yeah, there's a big, big streak of black coming through here. Got to be careful not to lose that. That's it. It's coming. See where we are here. That's that mark there. So we've got that streak that's coming through. And then we've got a very light bit there. We don't want to go on that at all. But about here, it starts getting nice and strong. Very strong. There. And then we've got a black bit there. So it's just like doing a puzzle, isn't it, really? We're just following the the lines. But it is very easy to get lost. This is why I say to you, if you could be methodical, um, you'll be you'll be better off. Just try and go over it in a methodical way. It's going to be much better. And don't forget, you can easily change it later. That's a great thing. If you do use coloured pencils, uh, it'll be difficult. It'll be a, a job of work, again, to change it. Whereas with these, you could just kind of go over them, really. It's quite... Right there. We've got a nice... See, I've left these bits here to get the red streaks in, rather than go on top. Although they are quite low key, um, once you've got them in, you can go over them, but they're, they're always there. You know exactly where they are there. And it's just such a lovely picture, this. Um, I just wanted to really copy it. Yes, I've said the word copy. It's not crime. 